High temperature heat pumps, what are they and why is everyone talking about them? It just seems to take one bit of news on the BBC or this time it's the Everything Electric show to talk about a specific technology or use this term and then all of a sudden a lot of people, oh, what, what, what's the difference? Why do we need them? Why are they so important? Because they never seem to truly explain what they are, why we need them. So I hope I can just knock off a few points and then I'll explain a little bit of my own opinion on high temperature heat pumps. So um, basically when they're talking about high temperature heat pumps, they're normally talking about heat pumps that use the refrigerant propane, which is R290. What that enables the heat pump to do is to reach higher flow temperatures. Now, why is that good? From a technical perspective, that means you don't technically need to upgrade any of your radiators. You can do, reheat your hot water cylinder without the assistance of any immersion heater, including, critically for some people, the Legionella cycle. So a uh, high temperature heat pump, for example, the Valent Aerotherm Plus that I have in my own home, that is technically a high temperature heat pump. I'd never refer to it as a high temperature heat pump. I think that's a, a gimmicky, terrible marketing name, but I understand why they've done it. It can, in theory, heat the hot water up to 70 degrees or above, which is just crazy. You don't need temperatures that high. So what were the old refrigerants? Well, the, the previous one that was most commonly widespread was R32, which for pretty much everyone, it can go plenty hot enough. And for most people would still not require them to upgrade their radiators. And for most people as well, it will do the hot water cylinder cycle, but it would need the assistance of an immersion heater to do the Legionella cycle, to do that last little bit, right at the top end of the temperature, the heat pump would do nine tenths of the job and then the immersion heater would just kick in for that last little bit to take the temperature over the, off the top just to make sure all the bugs are killed. So why have we made this change? The big, the main reason we've made the change actually is nothing to do with efficiency, it's nothing to do with um, making it easier for installation. That's why I think this term is a bit of a misnomer and just a marketing thing because R290 is being phased in because it, ha it is better for the environment than R32. It has less global warming potential so if it does leak or when it needs to be drained down or changed it's much more environmentally friendly to use R290 compared to the old R32. So why did they come up with this term of high temperature heat pumps? Well, it was quite clear from their market research and some focus groups that people were afraid that heat pump wasn't gonna keep them warm in their houses. What could they do about that? They jumped on the initiative to start calling these heat pumps high temperature heat pumps to try and differentiate them from the previous generation ones. Now in reality, R32 and R290, they're both equally efficient, that you're gonna have the same COP, the same SCOP, you're not gonna see any difference in your general day-to-day -day running of an R32 and an R290 heat pump. If you don't believe me, go and have a look on heat pump monitor, go and have a look on the MCS own database, you can see in lab control test environment that an R32 heat pump will perform just as well as an R290 heat pump unless you're pushing it into those crazy high temperatures, which most of us don't do. Here's a little secret. I've never run a Legionella cycle on my heat pump ever. Not that I've had it in my house for 10 years or anything, but we've gone a full winter and because of the high turnover of hot water, it's not an issue, it's just not a risk in my household. Other people, it will be different. If you do need to run a Legionella cycle once a week, R290 will have a bit of an advantage as a high temperature heat pump. But people saying that they're holding out and holding out and holding out because heat pump technology is gonna take leaps and bounds forward. I hate to be the bearer of bad news. It's not really being the bearer of bad news because it's, it's good news. Heat pump technology has been well understood and well implemented for 
decades and decades and decades and decades, mostly in refrigeration and in commercial environments, not so much in heating our UK homes, but now we're starting to implement it. They are having to work with marketing teams a little bit more. How can we spin this? How can we do this? I think it's a bit of a shame that Octopus are making a big deal of it with their Cozy 6 because I'm sure the Cozy 6 is going to be a great product. It's got the underpinnings from Red and from everyone who seems to know or be involved with Red or has used their product, they seem to speak very highly of the way that those old Red heat pumps were engineered. And is the Cozy 6 just a kind of mass market version of a red heat pump? Maybe. Will they cut some corners? Hopefully not too many. Will it enable more homes to have heat pumps? Yes, that's the critical thing for me. I'm not really that fast. What gets us to our end goal? Do the ends justify the means? I guess if that's what it takes to convince people that heat pump's going to be fine in their home, then fine. If Octopus are going ahead and calling it a high temperature heat pump, uh, let them crack on. Although I'm sure they've got plenty of people in research, plenty of you know focus groups, customer feedback, all those sorts of things. I guess the point of this video is don't get too hung up on it. The, the thing that can make the biggest difference to your installation isn't actually the equipment that's used. It's the person that has designed your system and the person who is installing your system and the person who is commissioning your system. In some cases, that might be one really great person who is very competent in design, installation and commissioning. In some of the bigger firms, they will have three separate people because that's asking a lot of one single person to be really good on the tools, having a brilliant installation that works really well someone that can also commission it correctly, properly, and someone who's going to design you a really efficient system. But if you can find that person or that group of people from one firm, they will do a much better job with an inferior product compared to someone who may take a, a Wiesman or one of these more uh, premium, you know, so-called or perceived premium brands and products and may do a poor installation. So don't, don't worry about it too much. It's just, uh, I don't know, it's just another thing to sidetrack us or maybe confuse us. Or maybe if you're doing your research and you're putting a lot of critical thinking into swapping to a heat pump, then maybe the terminology and the marketing doesn't matter to you. And maybe this kind of, this kind of thing is just there for bringing in the mass market, getting higher rates of adoption. Uh, another point someone mentioned about the Everything Electric show, you know, fully charged, that whole thing. You know, Robert and his team, they, well, especially Robert, he never sets out to tell you that he's a professional, that he's an engineer, that he's a scientist or anything. His show and the stuff they do around it is just to showcase what's out there. It's basically Think of that show as just a roll-in advert and that's all it is and I think that's great but don't be sucked into thinking that everything that's shown on those shows is good or is true. Um, you know like the con of uh, infrared heating panels and some of the material they've had around that. The Tepio, the Zeb uh, electric boiler Oh, it's a thermal store kind of thing, really. Um, that, that I'm, I'm completely digressing away from high temperature heat pumps. I should chop all of this out. But um, basically what I'm saying is, you know, watch these things with a critical eye because uh, what they've done there is they're, they're raising awareness. They've got a great platform. They're highlighting technology and solutions to our climate emergency and that has to be applauded um, but don't think that that automatically means that everything that is on there or anything that is discussed is good and that they've interrogated it because that's not really what they're doing on that show anyway i need to stop waffling
As ever, goodbye. Thank you for watching.